It was a claim that has brought the capacity of the University of Nairobi into question. Reports that students enrolled at the institution are living in dire housing conditions. A video that surfaced online showing students allegedly from the university sleeping on pavements and in hostel TV rooms. Some of us come from very far. Like for me, I come from like Kipia West County. I don't have anyone in Nairobi County who can house me. The farthest person is at the river. So I don't know what I'm going to do to even do this. I've not paid my fees. Some have even not paid their fees also. You don't have anything to eat. You sleep in the cold. Classes have started. So we wonder what the government is going to do for us so that at least we can change our lives. The university dismissing the report saying it can only facilitate about 11,000 bed capacity with the rest advised to find alternative accommodations before being enrolled. First years are normally given priority because they are new. Maybe to Nairobi, some are coming from far-flung areas. The students who are continuing sometimes cannot all be given accommodation because we cannot really admit every student in the university. In Kiambu County, a businessman has been charged with fraudulent acquisition of a piece of land valued at 400 million shillings. Kiambu senior resident magistrate Brian Kaemba ruled that he had established a prima facie case against Muktisaman in seven out of eight counts related to forgery and fraud. The case will be heard on the 23rd of November. It was further submitted that with regard to the eighth, to the eighth count of stealing, the said goods were seized pursuant to a court order and the same have not been converted because of another court order. Meanwhile, the judiciary has been urged to look for ways to decongest Kenyan prisons. Former Nakuru Member of Parliament, Mary Njoki Mbogwa, says her visit to 17 prisons across the country has revealed worrying states at the correctional facilities. Mukikaa chini na muone ni kina nani na nani ambaye nataka kukweda nyumbani, basi muharakisha hiyo manena. Wengi wamekaa sana hapa, meaka ishirini, meaka kumi, ata wengine wanjui kwa nyumbani. And the Saudi Arabian government has approved a financial grant of 2.5 billion shillings for the construction of the Modogashe Wajir Road. Speaking during celebrations to mark the 88th National Day of Saudi Arabia, Ambassador Dr. Mohammed Kayad said his government remains committed to supporting Kenya achieve her development agenda. Talks were held with the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection on improving labor opportunities and decent work conditions. Elsewhere, Nyandera Women Representative Faith Warimo Gitao has called on the government to consider issuing hardship allowances to civil servants and teachers working in arid areas of Nyandera County. Gitao says some of the civil servants working in the region have been exposed to unfavorable conditions that have compromised their productivity. In fact, we can say that Daragua is the marginalized sub-county in Nyandarua. And so, being your mom, I'll do the best I can to see that your life improves. Finally, the High Court sitting in Mombasa will on Wednesday rule on whether the Director of Public Prosecutions should produce a forensic report in a case relating to the murder of Nairobi businessman Jimmy Baburam. Baburam died under mysterious circumstances while on a family vacation in Watamu in July 26, in 2015. The wife of Baburam rejected a forensic report produced by prosecution claiming the officer who delivered it in court was not a signatory. Amina Shiraz, who was charged with the murder of her husband through her lawyer Jared Magolo, filed an application before Lady Justice Dora Chepkoni seeking the court to bar the prosecution from submitting the forensic report as evidence. The court is expected to visit Medina Palms Hotel, where the Nairobi businessman died on Wednesday.